Hello everybody and welcome to Written in Blood. My name is John and today I'm going to be doing the rapid fire book tag. Uh, I wasn't tagged by anybody. I saw Brad Proctor do this over on his channel and I thought hey this is pretty cool and it gives me something to do on a Thursday afternoon or evening so let's get this underway. So rapid fire book tag. A bunch of questions here. A lot of questions actually. Uh, Ebook or physical books? Uh, both. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I like the feel of a physical book. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I mean, that's always going to be my go-to, but sometimes it's not convenient to be able to carry a big physical book like a hardcover or a paperback with me, especially like at work because I work at night. And so when I have the opportunity to read, it's kind of hard to, you know, if you don't have the light. So the ebook does provide the light that I need to be able to read. So either way for me, uh, paperback or hardback? Hardback, definitely. I just love the feel of a hardback in my hand. I love the cover art. I love the the dust jacket and all that stuff. I mean, I think that's just awesome. So hardback. Uh, online or in-store book shopping. Again, that's something that doesn't really matter, although I do like to go to a physical bookstore, especially one that's an independent bookstore, like a used store, uh, like the Iliad in North Hollywood. We have book hounds here in Bakersfield. I do like to be able to look at the books to just you know, just the long rows of books just all over the place and stuff. That's a lot of fun. But then again, sometimes I can only find certain books that I want. I can only find them online. And so either way goes for me, but I guess we're going to choose it would be in store. So yeah. Trilogies or series? Uh, I'm not really into series that much, although I guess that's not really true because I did read the Anno Dracula series. Uh, I'm still reading that if it's if there's going to be any more books. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the Autobiography of a Werewolf Hunter, that started as a trilogy, and now they're doing a prequel that's going to be a trilogy. So it doesn't matter to me, you know, at all. It doesn't matter. Heroes or Villains? Uh, that's something I was telling my wife the other day. I was telling her that um, uh, I like shows and books where the villain redeems himself. And I also like books or movies or whatever where the hero becomes the villain i think that's because i used to like professional wrestling a lot you know but i've always liked those kind of stories uh like for instance on the walking dead he doesn't necessarily redeem himself completely but negan does go kind of from villain to anti-hero in a, in a sort of a way especially in the comic books so uh so yeah it doesn't matter hero or villain i like i like them both you know Although I think villains can be a lot more interesting. I mean, let's look at it this way. Look at the X-Men. Um, Magneto as opposed to Professor X. Who's more interesting? Magneto. We know he is. He's cool. Okay. Uh, book you want everyone to read? Well, I keep talking about Come Closer by Sarah Grant, so I'm going to talk about it here now. So, yes, Come Closer by Sarah Grant. It's about a woman told from the first-person point of view of a woman who may or may not be demonically possessed. It's creepy. Very creepy. I'm trying to get my wife to read it. She's got it in her locker at work. So this is me saying, read the book, honey. Anyway, uh, recommend an underrated book. Underrated book. Let me think. Um, well, personally, I think the books of Michael Slade are incredibly underrated. I think Michael Slade is a fantastic writer. He's a very meticulous researcher in his books. Uh, and they're just fantastic. They're part police procedural, part horror, part psychological horror, part suspense, and they're never boring, at least not to me. So, Michael Slade, anything by him. Uh, the last book you finished. I believe the last book I finished was book three in the Bell Witch Saga, and this is by, um, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting this poor woman's name, Sarah Clancy. Sarah Clancy, I believe it was, it was called The Witch Cave. And that's the book three. There is a fourth book, and I think she's publishing a fifth book here pretty soon. So, The Bell Witch Saga, The Witch Cave by Sarah Clancy. The best, last book you bought. Uh, if you're counting Kindle or eBooks, the last book I bought would be... Uh, oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the stupid book. Let me look up here. Hang on a minute. Sorry about that. Um, well, it's not showing up. Oh, no wonder. I don't have my Wi-Fi on, on, my, on my Kindle. And this is supposed to be rapid fire. This is just awesome. It'll show up in a minute. I am so sorry. And turn it on. Okay. Uh, I just can't remember the name of it. It's a book of addiction-based uh, horror stories, horror short stories. So hopefully it will come up here in a minute. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, Tales from the Lake, The Night is Dark. No, there should be more than this. 
Um, anyway, I cannot remember the exact name of it, but it's uh, stories by Keelan Patrick Burke, Carolyn Kepnes. Uh, trying to think who else. Uh, I believe it's Regina. Regina's Haunted Library recommended it. I think she bought it, and I told her, I said, stories about addiction horror. I said, just take my money. So I bought the Kindle version of it. It's like three ninety nine or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I just cannot remember the full title of it. I apologize for that. Okay, let me see. Get back to this. Um, oh, weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark. Uh, weirdest thing I've used as a bookmark. Toilet paper? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I used toilet paper once for a bookmark. Um, and my cat, my cat put his paw on my book one time when I was trying to read, so I just closed the book. I mean, I didn't close it hard. I mean, I just closed it real soft. So, yeah, he kind of worked as a bookmark, too. Although, I don't think he liked that job too well. Yeah, he's kind of weird that way. Uh, used books, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Because you can't go to a new bookstore like Barnes & Noble and find books from like the 70s or the 80s or whatever, especially horror. Uh, especially books from Tor books, from Zebra books, from Leisure books. You can't do that at Barnes & Noble. You can use, do that at a used bookstore. So used, I have no problem with. Yes. You know. Uh, top three favorite genres. Well, for me, it would be horror. Uh, if I were going to say this right, it would be horror, horror, and horror. But I won't, don't want to say that. Uh, so horror, true crime, I guess you could say, and uh, I like biographies, especially if it's like uh, rock biographies. Like I said, I've read books on Neil Young, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Warren Zevon. Uh, I read the autobi. I've read uh, Lou Reed's uh, biography, one of them. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, see, I've read um, No One Here Gets Out Alive about Jim Morrison and the Doors. Although I heard that's really uh, actually a pretty bad one, but I don't know. I liked it. Whatever. Uh, borrow or buy? Uh, bar or buy. Uh, buy. Because I have a library card and I might go there and check out an audio book if I feel like it. But as far as checking out books, I don't do it because I know what will happen. I'll keep them too long and they'll be overdue and then I'll have to pay a fine. So, yeah, no, I don't want to. I prefer just to buy the, buy the book, you know. Characters or plot? Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, I like both. I like character-driven books, but I also like plot-driven books. Uh, I believe, to me right now, the book that I'm reading now is a little bit of a mixture of both. It's uh, um, called Devil's Creek, and I received it as an ARC. It's on my uh, Kindle. Uh, it's by Todd Kiesling. It's like 400-something pages. It, like I said, it's an advanced copy, an ARC, an advanced reader copy. Uh, and it's kind of both. It's kind of character driven, but there is kind of a plot driven. Uh, it's kind of plot driven at the same time. So that doesn't matter to me. So yeah, uh, long or short books. It depends on the book. I mean, you can get a. Did you ever see the movie Deep Blue Sea? Uh, Deep Blue Sea. Remember that thing that um, L. O. Cool J said about the theory of relativity. He said you uh, you put your hand on a hot stove. And a second feels like an hour, but you put your hand on a beautiful woman and in a nice way, respectable way, don't get me wrong here, and on a, in a respectable way, and a and an hour seems like a second. And that's kind of what it is. You can get a long book and it can be so damn good and it'll just fly by. Or you can get a short book and it'll be, be so bad, you're like, oh Lord, please let this be over with. So again, that's one that doesn't really matter. It just depends on the story, okay? Uh, long or short chapters, same answer, same answer. You know, uh, I have seen some authors just drag out chapters and drag them out. It's like watching Meet Joe Black. Did you ever see that movie? I thought that damn thing would never freaking end. You know, it's like you get this, what seemed like a conclusion to it, and then next thing you know, here we go with another scene. It's like, oh, give me a break. I hated that movie. Stupid. Anyway. So it doesn't matter. Uh, long or short chapters, it just, you know, it just depends. Uh, name the first three books you think of. Headhunter by Michael Slade. Dracula by Bram Stoker. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, Tales of Terror. Got it. Uh, books that make you laugh or cry. Uh, there's one that made me cry uh, recently. It was a haunted house book called The Poor and the Haunted, and it's by Dustin McKissick. I highly recommend that book. I, I loved it. It's just a, a haunted house or ghost story that... 
just really it was I, the twist just about killed me. It was just hard. I I, I cried. Uh, our world, our our world or fictional worlds. Um, I like both. Uh, I like uh, you know stories that are set in our world, like the stories of Michael Slade. They're definitely set in our world. Or then you have the stories of like people like H.P. Lovecraft, which are set in places like the Dreamlands, uh, Unknown Kadath, um, um, Carcosa, which he didn't create, by the way. That was created by um, uh, Ambrose Bierce. So anyway, uh, so yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, as long as it's a good story. All right. Uh, audiobooks, yes or no? I used to would say yes because I listened to them on the way to work because I had a long drive. But now that I don't really have that much time and my attention span is kind of all over the place, I'll pass. Say no. Uh, do you ever judge a book by its cover? Uh, yes. I took one look at Fifty Shades of Grey and said, this is going to be crap. So, yes, I judge a book by its cover. And if there are any Fifty Shades of Grey fans out there, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, book to movie or book to TV adaptations? That's kind of a double-edged sword because I personally I think that a book to TV adaptation is better because especially if you just let it draw out over the episodes over five or ten or whatever episodes then I think you can yeah so I think book to TV uh, a movie or TV show you refer to uh, oh hang on a minute here a movie or TV show you refer to its book Jaws. Jaws is hands down a better movie than it is a book. Jaws. And finally, series or standalones? Well, I've read series, but I actually do prefer standalones. I mean, I do read some series, uh, but standalones are the ones that really do it the most for me. And that's it. That is the rapid fire book tag. I'm not going to tag anybody. If you feel like doing this tag, it's a pretty cool tag. By all means, do it, because I would love to see your answers, or love to hear your answers, or whatever. So, until next time, thank you for watching, and bye-bye.